We're approaching the end of an astonishing quarter here. We're up 10% yeah. on the S&P, 25% in five months. That, that That is really, really rare, folks. Uh, it's happened only, I think, seven times since 1950. So uh, a lot of people complain, you know about this, uh, the concentration risk, the people say, uh, Thirty percent of the S and P 500s in, in ten stocks. Um, you know, is this a real concern about this? And if so, where should investors turn? I hear all sorts of other ideas, but is is um, I don't know is uh, return to the mean or, or uh, you know mean reversion necessarily going to happen? It, it does not have to. We all go back to the tech bubble as the historical miss of the data set. But when you get momentum like this, it begets more momentum. Uh, it's consistent with major market lows, right back in we're a year and a half off the October 2022 low. Um, and for example, you know, you, you spent much of the 90s in a similar scenario where you had these types of momentum returns, and it just kept going eventually until the economic uh, conditions really deteriorated in 2000. But if you're worried about the concentration risk, and we get a lot of questions about this, you can either A, go the active approach where you're gonna have a more balanced sector skew or equalate your portfolio. And there are plenty of solutions out there now from the ETF industry to equalate the S&P or use a fundamental factor to equalate. And that way you're getting less tech exposure and you're getting more of the bench, more energy, industrials, materials. In order to at least balance things out, you may still get hit on a major decline, but at least it may not be as bad as if the tech names and the communication type names get hit. What I find interesting is after a run like this, everybody is calling me up and ev everyone is in the uh, imminent pullback business, you know. Well, Bob, uh, come on. You don't really expect this to be up another 10%. Yeah. The second quarter it can't happen. Now it doesn't go. Trees don't grow to the sky, all this. And yet your point is well taken. I looked at this and the seven times this has happened since 1950, the S&P was higher at six out of the last seven. And that's because in most of the cases, the momentum was really powerful. The yeah. advanced decline line was really strong in these situations. It wasn't just, you know, eight stocks moving the whole, the whole yeah. planet. And our, our, the AD line has been really good. 70% of the S&P is up this quarter. This, no, this is uh, as much, those stocks, the eight stocks, not however many, they influence the benchmark the most. So it feels like it's just them. Yeah. But the bench, as I like to call it, small caps are starting to, get their mojo, energy, industrials, those all work. And that reflects a more confident market, and you're going to have FOMO set in. I guess what I, what I try to use this for is a teaching moment, because the implication is these people are saying, well, of course, it's got to be a pullback. Uh, well, yes, maybe, yeah. but you think you know what to do with market timing, and that's the problem philosophically that I have. Yeah. We know that market timing is a very, very poor way to invest in the stock market. And you think you know when to go in and go out, but you've got to be right going in and going out. And we all know how hard that is. You can't do it very well. Be right twice. That's, yeah. that's difficult. It's just a really difficult thing to do. So I always try, and this is my trader talk today, folks, if you want to go to it, tradertalk.cnbc.com, uh, is uh, don't worry about market time, particularly when you've got something like this. And so play against this trope. Oh, there's got to be a pullback, Bob, of course. Maybe. And maybe we'll be down five or, you know, eight or nine percent sometime in the spring. But... The odds right now are that we'll be higher six months from now. Exactly. So now what do you do? you got to be right market timing going in and then go back in, and then you're not – you're going to make yourself crazy here. This is why I became a Jack Bogle disciple, because <laughs> right. I couldn't figure out how to do market timing. And I finally realized Bogle was right. Forget it. Stop doing that. It's a silly way to make money. Yeah. This has been a great conversation. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Todd, thank you very thank you. much. Really appreciate it. That does it for this week's ETF Edge. My thanks to Steve and Todd. We've asked Todd to stick around and give us his – Further thoughts on where ETFs are going in the second quarter? Yes, we'll ask them to make predictions. And remember, you can see all of our shows on our website, etfedge.cnbc.com. Everybody, have a healthy, happy, and safe trading week.